Hello, class. This is Mr. Hart. In the last podcast, we looked at electromagnetism and one of the first devices created using electromagnetism, the electromagnet. In this lesson, we want to look at electromagnetic induction, which is another phenomenon that occurs because of this connection between electricity and magnetism. Okay, well, it comes from this idea of, hey, if electricity can generate a magnetic field, could a magnetic field be used to generate electricity? Okay, and you bet, okay? Um, that's what electromagnetic induction is. It's the opposite of what we looked at last time, okay? So electromagnetic induction is the creation of le electric current on a wire when exposed to a varying magnetic field. So before we said, okay, if you put wire, or electricity through a wire, you generate a magnetic field. Now we're saying if you make a magnetic field, then you can put electricity on a wire, okay? So this connection we have is gonna work both ways. Whenever we have changing electric fields, we make magnetic fields. Whenever we have changing magnetic fields, we make electric fields. So the easiest way to cause a varying magnetic field so we get electromagnetic induction is to actually physically move a magnet of some kind. Okay, so one possible way to do this is to have a coil of wire, a uh, solenoid that we talked about last time, and then just to move the bar magnet in and out of that solenoid. Okay, that will generate some type of electric current. Let me pull up a simulation that shows this. This is a uh, FET simulation um, that shows that when we have a changing magnetic field, a current can be induced. Okay, we can see that the light bulb is moving or shining as we move the magnet in and out. Okay, but notice it has to be a changing magnetic field. If I just let the magnet sit here, it's not going to do anything. If I let it sit here, it's not going to do anything. Okay, it's that motion that causes the light bulb to turn on and off. Okay, that's electromagnetic induction. If you can get a consistent way to change that magnetic field, then you can keep the light bulb on indefinitely. One way to do that is to have water move that magnet. Okay, and we can see as the magnet is rotated, okay, that causes a changing magnetic field and that causes the light bulb to turn on. Okay, if I show the field, we can see that the rotating magnet is constantly changing the magnetic field. Thus, a current is induced on those wires, and then we get the light bulb to turn on. Okay? You'll find that a lot of um, ways we generate electricity are kind of based on this principle. Now, it's not just have water spill down on a magnet. It actually is, isn't very effective for, you know, production for a whole city. But we often use things like steam. Okay? Coal burning plants and things like that generate steam heat that causes a magnet to turn or motor to turn that moves the magnet and that's what generates electricity in these cities okay but it comes from electromagnetic induction having some type of field magnetic field changing which induces electric current so we've looked at how electricity affects magnetism and how magnetism affects electricity we kind of physically see these things occurring michael faraday shows this when he makes his motor Okay, we can physically see this what's going on, but we haven't been able to describe mathematically what's going on. And historically, no one could until a man by the name of James Clark Maxwell. Okay, uh, much younger than Michael Faraday, about 40 years younger than he is. Okay, but um, he comes to Michael Faraday. Um, at this point, Michael Faraday is kind of an established scientist from all of his discoveries, but he's never able really to prove a lot of things mathematically. Again, because Michael Faraday never went to school. He was just the son of a blacksmith. Okay, James Maxwell was a nobleman, very wealthy family that he came from, was able to get some very high mathematics courses and was a very great mathematician. And he's finally able to describe what Michael Faraday had shown uh, in the lab and this connection between electricity and magnetism. And Maxwell's famous for what is known as the Maxwell Equations, which describe these fields, okay? Now, they require some pretty heavy mathematics, okay? These are integrals over an area, okay, for both the electric and magnetic fields, which we represent with B, right? And so we have these partial differential equations that describe what's going on. We're not gonna cover that in this class, okay? That's a, you know, senior level physics course in college that when you kind of look at what's happening, okay? But we don't need to worry about that. But he's finally able to describe what's going on mathematically that shows this connection between electricity and magnetism, okay? So the big thing I want you to remember from this lesson is, first of all, electromagnetic induction is magnetic field causing electric current. But overall, this key idea of electromagnetism is that a changing electric field creates a magnetic field 
and a changing magnetic field creates an electric field. Okay, they're interconnected. They're part of the same force, the same type of energy. Okay, they have this strange connection that we can see. Okay, in the next lesson we'll look at how we can use this for changing the world and how it changed the world during the Industrial Revolution. Okay, because we can have this connection so easily. Okay, but hopefully that all made sense. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching.